Quote, We are all teachers, and what we teach is what we learn. And so we teach it over and over again until we learn. Unquote. That's from A Course in Miracles. And also, quote, The real purpose of teachers, books, and teachings is to lead us back to the kingdom of God within ourselves. Joe Goldsmith. Just as we're all students throughout life, we're all teachers. In fact, we learn best by offering what we desire for ourselves to as many individuals as we can, as frequently as we can. And that's one reason I wrote this book and I'm putting together this program. If I instruct enough people for a long enough period of time, I'll teach what I most want to learn, which is how to live in spirit. Following this line of thinking, it's imperative that we make a deliberate effort to increase our inspirational energy, as this will lead us to being both a spiritual learner and teacher simultaneously. Spiritual teachers have raised the vibrational frequency of their daily life to a point where they're able to provide inspiration to others merely by their presence, and this is the standard to which we need to aspire. It isn't necessarily a scholarly undertaking— there are no lesson plans or report cards for this kind of teaching I'm writing about in these pages and that I'm speaking about here in this program. Rather, I'm talking about the things we can do each and every day to inspire our fellow humans. Kindness inspires others. One simple act of kindness and service that's in alignment with our source will do more to inspire others than lectures on the virtues of being a thoughtful citizen ever could. We can also be on the lookout for opportunities to be a source of inspiration. For example, when I board an airplane, I tend to look for the chance to extend some sort of service to strangers. I put the word strangers in quotations in the book to emphasize there aren't actually any strangers anywhere in the universe. Helping vertically challenged passengers place their carry-on luggage in the overhead compartment is perfect because... Others noticing this kind of kindness may be inspired while at the same time I'm heeding my own calling to be both inspired and inspiring. Gratitude inspires others. Without exception, I begin every day of my life with an expression of gratitude. As I look in the mirror to begin my daily ritual of shaving, I say, Thank you, God, for life, for my body, for my family and loved ones, for this day, and for the opportunity to be of service. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If we practice gratitude as opposed to maintaining an attitude of entitlement, we'll automatically extend inspiration wherever we go. Being grateful helps remove the influence of our ego, which is certain that we're better than everybody else. An attitude of gratitude allows us to adopt what's called radical humility, a trait that's very persuasive in helping others feel inspired. Most of the people I've met or observed who are at the top levels in their chosen fields have these attitudes of gratitude and radical humility. After all, when so many high achievers reach for their statuette or championship trophy, they often say, first, I'd like to thank God. It's almost as if they can't help themselves. They're so grateful for their accolade, but even more than that, they know that there's a force in the universe way bigger than they are that allows them to act or sing or write or compete or design. And if we adopt this kind of an attitude, we'll inspire others. It's that simple. Generosity inspires others. It doesn't matter if we call it God, Krishna, Atman, Allah, the universal mind, Ra, Yahweh, or even Anna or Fred. I think we'd all agree that the all-creating source of everything is the most generous being there is. Along with life itself, it offers us unending abundance in the form of air, water, lungs, heart, kidney, liver, and all we need to sustain life. On just this one tiny planet hurling through space, whatever name we want to call it, it provides the ability to feed all of us and dispose of all of our waste, which then gets used to fertilize new life and then repeats the process over and over and over again. And remember, this is only one planet in an endless universe of heavenly bodies. Talk about benevolence. Generosity is obviously one of the ways to be more godlike. I know that I'm inspired when I see evidence of it on the part of others. Very often it's manifested during or following times of crisis, almost as if God gets our attention and reminds us to be more like Him when we face devastating circumstances. A tsunami diverts our aircraft carriers away from killing each other and into a zone where food and shelter are offered. An earthquake motivates us to risk our own lives to save strangers who days before were called enemies. And hurricanes bring out the best in us. 
Such so-called disasters lead us to the inherent godlike generosity that's latent within all of us. However, we don't need a crisis to remind ourselves to give. We only need to be in spirit to be reminded of the joy of donating our energy, time, and possessions to others. Listening inspires others. As ironic as it may sound, we're far more inspiring to others when we're willing to listen than when we're giving them advice. That's because conveying to others that we value what they have to say is a way of demonstrating that we care. It's a way of being inspiring, a way of listening like God. People who find it difficult to listen to another person without bringing the conversation back to themselves are convinced by their ego of their self-importance. And as you're well aware by now, that ego is an illusion that's convinced us to pay attention to a false self. There's no higher compliment than to be told we're a good listener. Everyone loves a good listener, largely because it makes them feel loved, cared for, and worthy of being heard. When we leave any encounter where we feel we've been heard, even if we know the listener strongly disagreed with us, we're still inspired. Why? Because for a few moments the listener has emulated what it feels like when we pray. In deep prayer, we're not looking for the resolution of conflict or answers falling from the sky. We just want to feel as if we're in contact with someone who cares enough to hear us out. This brings to mind something Mahatma Gandhi, one of the truly inspirational beings of our time, once said, Silence of the sewn-up lips is no silence. One may achieve the same result by chopping off one's tongue, but that would not be silence. He is truly silent who, having the capacity to speak utters no idle word. In addition, these words from Ralph Waldo Emerson have always reminded me to be a listener. I like the silent church before the service begins, better than the preaching, he said. This is great advice if we wish to be a source of inspiration.